Elon Musk just posted this and pinned it on X. The Tesla team put this together of their own volition. I did not ask for it. Thanks. Obvious caveat there. This wasn't a directive from Musk. It's not a coincidence that this caveat was included. So let's watch this video. First, quote, We have put forward two especially important proposals for our annual meeting of stockholders, and we need your vote. Protect your rights as stockholders and protect the value of your investment by voting for the ratification of the 2018 CEO Performance Award and for reincorporating Tesla in Texas. Read more at votetesla.com. And before you watch this video, every time I post an update on this, somebody, actually quite a few somebody's post, oh man, thanks for the reminder, I just saw this, I finally voted. So, sorry to the 90 plus percent of people who have already cast their vote, but for the 10% who haven't, go to votetesla.com and make your vote count. The goal is to give people hope that there is a path to a fully sustainable global economy, that we are on that path, that we are accelerating that path, and that so long as we don't get complacent about it, it will happen. This was really the beginning of the end of the Tesla bubble. I actually think the company could go bust. Tesla's Model Y is the world's best-selling car, beating out Toyota's RAV4 and its Corolla models. Regarding FSD version 12, it's profound. The rate of improvement is rapid. It might be the biggest asset value appreciation in history when you can do unsupervised full self-driving. I mean, that just sounds like a story stock, uh, autonomous taxi. I mean, can you really balance your checkbook with, you know, sort of pie in the sky predictions like that? If you ask the wrong question, the right answer is impossible. My prediction is that a majority of Tesla's long-term value will be Optimus. And that prediction I'm very confident of. It's very rare a product comes along that is seemingly impossible, that experts said would never be made. And this is one of those times. Finally, the future will look like the future. People say, like, why'd you make it bulletproof? I'm like, why not? <laughs> Energy storage deployments, the mega pack in particular, reached an all-time high in Q1, leading to record profitability for the energy business. This is the machine that builds the machine, and the factory is the product. And this building is the most advanced car factory that Earth has ever seen. If you value Tesla as an auto company, it's just the wrong framework. If somebody doesn't believe Tesla's gonna solve autonomy, I think they should not be an investor in the company. But we will. And we are. Pretty strong and clear message for Tesla shareholders. And that's putting it lightly. Again, if you haven't already voted, head to votetesla.com, learn how to do it. It really matters. Now, as I've said, it can't possibly be good for Tesla if Musk is robbed of his fairly earned compensation. Nor good for corporate America, nor capitalism, nor democracy. As I've also said, however, the threshold for the ratification of Musk's 2018 compensation, thankfully, is much lower, e.g. much more likely to end up getting the yes vote that it needs, than the extremely important corporate headquarter move from Delaware to Texas. As I discussed in a recent video, there's a different method for counting votes here. In the case of Musk's compensation, a vote that isn't cast isn't counted either way. However, based on the wording in the legal documents, that's not the case for Tesla's move from Delaware, where Kathleen McSeebaum spat in the face of Tesla investors and democracy and tried to fuck Elon by robbing him of his fairly earned compensation, to Texas, where fucking people, investors and shareholders without consent is far less likely. In that situation, votes that are not cast automatically count as a no. This is a significant risk. If Tesla isn't able to move their on-paper headquarters to Texas out of Delaware, corrupt activists pretending to be judges like Kathleen McSeebaum can continue to attack and damage Tesla endlessly. That's why this is such a big deal. And you can tell what a big deal this is because Tesla themselves are banging the drum. Has to be, far and away, the most important shareholder vote in the company's history. On that note, the company's history and now the company's future. Did you notice in this promo video, we've seen a few video snippets of the Tesla ride hail app. Check it out. We can see somebody summoning a robo taxi here. 
only a few little tidbits of the app, but there's another shot now. You can see the pickup location, very similar service to Uber, but of course the difference is no human driver. We also got another peek at one of the early prototypes for a Tesla Robo Taxi. Apparently a two-seater here, which odds are is extremely likely to be the form factor, give or take, for at least one variation of their Robo Taxi vehicle, because the vast majority of trips people take in a taxi, Uber, Lyft, etc., is usually one person, occasionally two, and yes, there are exceptions when a family needs to travel, but guess what? Most of Tesla's existing vehicles will also be able to act as robo taxis in the future. You know, the ones that can seat five plus people. No big deal. A lot of people have made suggestions that Musk will leave Tesla if he does get fucked and robbed of his well-earned compensation. <laughs> I find this extremely unlikely. But, as I mentioned many times, there is no possible way that Musk getting robbed of fairly earned compensation can be good for Tesla or for the company. There just isn't. Also, is it just me or is anyone else getting some 2001 Space Odyssey vibes? I came across this classic meme on X that summed things up perfectly. I'm not going to narrate this one. You guys can pause the video and soak it up, but I'm sure a lot of guys watching have been in this very situation. P.S. If this ever happens to you, you are entirely welcome to use a spontaneous line that ended up coming out of my mouth in one of these situations many years ago. Extremely angry, butthurt hag of a friend, jealous that her attractive friend is getting hit on by some dude in a bar, making a big scene. Here's how to exit in your most serious possible tone to the beautiful young woman you were having a wonderful conversation with until that happened. Quote, seems like your mother is having a really bad day. So I better leave you guys to it. Nice to meet you. And then walk. And now from one beast to a different kind of beast. Apparently Cybertruck production is now at around 200 units per day. Give or take, that's roughly 75,000 vehicles a year. Solid progress. Speaking of Cybertrucks, still can't believe this is my life, but apparently Kim Kardashian, I mean, I think that's her, I don't know, I just saw it in a post on X, has a second Cybertruck now, Matt Black, and clearly enjoys being seen in said vehicle. A couple of shots here. Isn't it so nice to see what I said would happen happening? Everyone, A-list celebrities, actors, athletes, rappers, you name it. Everybody who's anybody wants to be seen in and around their Cybertruck. Coolest vehicle on earth, hands down, or in this case, hand up. And interestingly, back to the topic of the Tesla shareholder vote, Sawyer Merritt posted this. Wow, I was just informed that around 84,000 Tesla shareholders at a Vanza bank in Sweden can now vote in Tesla shareholder meeting after the bank made an exception. Here's their statement, quote, We have received many requests to be able to vote. Normally, we do not offer the opportunity to vote at general meetings outside the European Union, but we have made an exception in this case. Sawyer adding that this is what a community effort looks like. Now, interestingly, this goes to show that kicking up a stink is having an effect. 84,000 Tesla shareholders. Who knows how many shares the average shareholder at this particular brokerage has? This is what happens when you start making a noise. It's completely insane that shareholders anywhere on earth do not have the ability to exercise their right to vote in the Tesla shareholder meeting or any shareholder meetings if they own stocks, right? If you own at least one share of a company, you should be able to cast your vote against that share, period. This is just reasonable. And it's completely insane that there are brokerages out there who don't allow this. Of course, they're like, yeah, well, you don't understand the ownership entity and the structure. Fuck you. Find a way to let your people vote, as has happened here. Now, of course, money talks. And what's actually happening here is this brokerage has realized there's a bunch of people saying, well, fuck you guys. I'm going to move my shares to a different brokerage so I can vote, bitches. And out of fear, no doubt. I mean, <laughs> listening to customer feedback, these folks have done the right thing. Case in point, if your brokerage does not yet allow you to vote, it may not be too late. Kick up a stink. And if you just so happen to have a reasonable following on social media, it probably won't hurt to also mention to them while you're having a phone call. Hi, excuse me, what was your name again? Just, uh, okay, okay, I'm talking to Daniel. Surname, okay. At 10.45, and he will say, excuse me, sir, why are you writing that? Oh, don't, don't worry, I just want to keep a record of this call. Then they start to panic. Then you have the conversation, them realizing, oh, fuck, why do you write these details down? And then if they happen to say, well, I can't, I can't help you here, we can't vote. Okay, cool. Are you sure about that? I just wanted to make sure, because I'm going to let everyone on my social media know that XYZ brokerage is not allowing me to cast my vote in this meeting. Okay, thank you so much for your help, Daniel, surname. Because usually what will happen when somebody believes you're writing down their name, they start to panic and will be very keen to escalate the matter to somebody who could possibly help you. Of course, it could go pear-shaped. They might panic, get butthurt and mad and not be helpful, but it's worth a try. In fact, you may even 
be able to forward them this because this brokerage appears to have figured out a way to enable voting. How? During the voting process, they're adding a temporary security into people's custody that corresponds to their voting position in Tesla. However, this doesn't allow individual voting on each matter. Instead, it allows investors to either vote for all of the board's recommendations, as in follow what the board recommends, which is generally a good idea. After all, the board has an interest, a fiduciary responsibility, in fact, to do what is in the best interest of shareholders. So you can either vote with what the board recommends, which I would recommend, or vote against if you still have sand in your vagina because Elon bad. And now a note from Morgan Stanley, interestingly titled, Elon Musk needs Tesla more than ever. The reverse, obviously also true. AI's appetite for capital and data increases Tesla's importance within the Musconomy. I feel like there's a low-key drinking game going on at Morgan Stanley. Like, how many times per note can you put Musk on me? <laughs> As investors question if the CEO's commitment is less or more, we believe Elon needs Tesla more than ever before. Why do we believe Tesla is needed now more than ever? AI is a capital game. The broader collection of Elon Musk's businesses may collectively invest many tens of billions of dollars in AI infrastructure in coming years. Cost of capital is deterministic for AI supremacy. Now, it's certainly true that you do need an absolute fuck ton of capital, primarily for AI training compute. Otherwise, you do not have a chance. A Tesla without AI. Well, uh, I just have to jump in here. What? That's not going to happen. Hello, FSD. There's no, it's not like they're just going to delete FSD and then blow up their training compute. <laughs> anyway, I'll read it anyway. I'll just, it's just kind of absurd scenario. A Tesla without AI would set a precedent that would increase the cost of capital across Elon's other AI endeavors. Tesla's success lowers the cost of capital in the Musconomy, yet that drinking game is absolutely underway. That's two already, in our opinion. Shit, and a third. Tesla's failure... Dude, I guarantee fucking tea, bro. Someone, someone at Morgan Stanley, can you confirm? DM me on Nick. This is a drinking game, isn't it? Someone said, how many times can you put this in each note? Tesla's failure raises the cost of capital for the Musconomy, in our opinion. They better not say it again, or I'm going to lose my fucking mind. In addition to the cost of capital, we believe, on a fundamental level, that the data... Infrastructure built and path to monetization within Tesla is critical to Musk's seemingly adjacent AI efforts. Data captured by the car, both inside and out, enhance AI learning and development. The auto total addressable market, the internet of cars, is one of the largest in the world, 12 trillion miles, hundreds of billions of vehicle hours. And the car's unique attributes, being a mobile server, having compute, thermal and energy storage, may be seen as more critical in the emerging AI-driven hybrid compute ecosystem. This last point has implications for autos broadly, not just Tesla. The lines are blurring between phone slash robot, phone slash mobile AI assistant. Over time, we expect to see Mr. Musk's efforts within social media and generative AI, plus space and communications, and automotive and transportation become more conspicuously linked. By the way, they're probably right. We would encourage investors to pay close attention to the June 13th shareholder vote. We see Tesla's June 13th shareholder vote as having significance to the long-term strategic direction of the company. While impossible to predict the outcome, we expect the event could drive material volatility in the stock. And I expect that they're probably right. Just imagine what happens if Musk gets robbed of his compensation. Not saying that's likely. I'm just saying imagine if it happened. And what about the reverse? Imagine if it's ratified. There goes some uncertainty. Same too for the move from Delaware to Texas. Something to ponder. And again, if you haven't voted, please, please just do it. Otherwise, you might regret that decision. And I'll leave it at that. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, it has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. And I haven't missed a daily video in more than three years. Must be a coincidence, right? Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. But don't take my word for it. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. By the way, viewer, that makes two of us. On to the next. Just got my AG1 in the mail. Legit feeling the effects after day three. This viewer's been taking AG1 for eight months and says, what an investment. Another. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. Plenty more to come.
This viewer, after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more, yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. It really is what everyone is saying. One more, don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. Now look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect. But even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. If you're still skeptical, hey, I don't blame you. Everyone on the planet seems to be promoting AG1 now, but guess what? They weren't nearly three years ago when I had this to say privately to my Patreon audience before there was a relationship when I was asked about what I was doing for my health, energy, and so on. Just sharing my genuine, honest thoughts about a product I'd recently discovered that was at the time called Athletic Greens. Now, AG1. If I could only recommend one supplement to take, Athletic Greens, and I'm not getting paid to say this, Athletic Greens is a fucking game changer. I just, I cannot believe how effective this is. No longer having a lack of energy in the afternoons. It's fucking amazing. There's only one thing to recommend seriously, try Athletic Greens. You won't go back. So obviously, just like Elon Musk is a liar, a fraud, a con man, a scammer, a fake engineer, and Tesla's going bankrupt, you shouldn't trust that guy from about three years ago who, without any financial incentive, was promoting this product to his audience on Patreon when they're asking about health and what he's doing for supplements. Because obviously, there was some other reason he recommended that, obviously. I'm not sure what it was, but don't trust that guy. And all the testimonials, like my mental game has improved with AG1. I feel better than ever. I'm so impressed I've bought it for both my parents. I feel more focused and have better digestion. Incredible difference. No more afternoon fatigue. It's relieved gut issues. These are all just obviously fake testimonials from fake people. Right? Wrong. Just try it. Unless you hate yourself. If you hate yourself and you don't even want to risk possibly feeling better, this is not for you. But for everyone else, what's the worst that could happen? Try it for a month. See how you feel. It's a no-brainer. Just click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR. You'll get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 plus five travel packs. And you'll take the colossal risk that maybe you might have a similar experience to some of the people whose testimonials we've read in this video.